you know, there's this big unknown, you're headed out into this alien landscape that's just completely hostile to you. And you know, if you didn't have a nice ship and extremely warm clothes, you probably wouldn't be able to survive. And so Mosaic as a whole, it's a year-long drifting expedition. So it involves people from 20 different nations, about 600 scientists. It's a huge, massive effort meant to study the Arctic as a system, not just the ice, but things like the atmosphere, the ocean, biogeochemistry, all kinds of things in a way that allows us to look at what's happening throughout the course of the year. So we left Tromso on September 20th took us 10 days or so between leaving port, sailing out, picking up some instrumentation, uh, and then starting to sail into the ice pack uh, and starting to search for the flow. It was really difficult to find the flow uh, because we needed ice that was thick enough to support all our equipment. Some, some of it's very heavy and to do this safely. And actually one of the big surprises to me and a lot of people on board was just how thin the ice was. You'd get out on the ice, but it's dangerous. It's an alien landscape. It's cold, there's bears. The polar bear situation was really interesting. Uh, yeah, and, and kind of terrifying. <laughs> when we were out on the ice and we were setting things up, taking measurements, the bears did come back two times when I was there. And there, there, they came to our camp and they were doing things like messing with the equipment and, and going through our site. So there it was different because they're, they're, they're more on the turf that we had set up. You know, this is our turf now and now they're, they're coming in and I could see them in places that I had been. So we were very isolated on the, the polar stern and we had very limited connectivity. We had a, an email account we could send 50 kilobytes a message. It was a big change for me and a lot of people. A lot of people said, you know, after a week or so, I didn't miss it anymore. And I was one of those people. I really appreciated being a bit more isolated for a while and experiencing life in a different way. Doing field work like this brought me right there to the ice. When I do my research, I use data like this from the, the data that's taken up close on the ice. Sometimes that's the only way to get information on the ice. Things like how dense is the ice or how dense is the snow, you can't do this remotely. But we can use this to do calibration and validation of ice at two over the course of the year. So this is valuable for improving the, the retrieval techniques that we use for ice at two. For me to be on the ground and get that different look at the, the ice and the surface, it just helps me as a scientist come up with new ideas and to inspire me to use the data that I have and then think about this in a, a totally new way, in a different way. 